Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer. I hope you're having a great day. Recently, a lot of stamp companies have been offering coordinating dies to go with stamp sets that they sell. This allows you to cut out the stamped images very quickly. However, I find that if I'm going to invest the money in the coordinating die set, I want to get more uses out of them just than cutting them out. So I wanted to show you a technique today where you can use a coordinating die to create a mask for a stamped image. I actually have three examples for you, and let's get started with the white banner piece, getting ready for the stamping. So I'm going to die cut from some Nina Solar White cardstock, any white cardstock would work, this banner die from Avery L. It's going to put tiny little piercings around the inside edge of the banner die, which gives it a nice finished touch. You can see the piercings on the die and then on the die cuts also. You could cut your own if you wanted to. Now this die is actually part of a great set from Avery L. You can see there's also the scalloped banner and then two additional tags. I like dies like that that have several options in one set. I'm also using a stamp set and coordinating die set from Avery L. I am making these cards for two kids who are battling cancer. I'm doing a card shower for them where I'm collecting cards to send them to make them smile. And I'll link to information on that so you can send in cards also if you'd like to. So two of these cards will go to those kids and then one of them I'm going to save for my son. I'm stamping these with my favorite things, black hybrid ink, because this is a Copic friendly ink. And I'm using the Nina White cardstock because that's a Copic friendly paper. And I'm gonna be doing my coloring with Copic. However, you can use any color medium that you're comfortable with. I'm going to quickly walk you through some of the Copic coloring that I did on these guys. I start with a light color and then add some shading with a medium color. Then I move to the dark color, back to the medium, and then I finish off with the light. That's usually the way that I find easiest to use Copic markers. Now, I'm not a shading or highlighting genius with Copics. I just do what works for me, and I encourage you to do the same. This is all supposed to be fun. In fact, I think it would be fun to do these cards also and have your kids do the coloring because kids always love to get cards from other kids. So next I'm going to color his belly and his hair blue. Now I wanted to make these images very playful, so I de decided to add polka dots to his belly. This is very easy with Copic markers. I just take the zero colorless blender, which basically kind of erases or, re or moves the color, and I just hold the tip of the marker onto the color, and you can see it creates these faint dots. It's really fun, and it's a playful way to add some quick and easy interest to your colored images. Now, if you're using markers besides Copics, you could use a white colored pencil for this or a white gel pen. Now for this hairy monster here, I'm just gonna color him solid blue and add a little bit of a darker blue just around the outside edge, but I'm not gonna take the time to blend it. Instead, I'm just gonna draw tiny little light feathered lines all over his body to give that look of that hair to it. Now you could really spend some time getting this just perfect, but I didn't wanna spend too much time on it. I'm just gonna go through and do this very quickly. I think when it's all said and done, it works just fine. I'm not worrying too much about the shading or the direction or anything like that. I'm just adding quick little feathered motions to create that look of hair. Then I'm going in back with that lighter color that I started with and just kind of going over it here and there, like additional hairs, just to help kind of blend it out and not make it look as harsh. This is another technique that's fun with these kind of playful images. Now at this point, I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and glue on some Google eyes, but you'll see in a moment that I actually removed them because I forgot I need to put a mask over this for the technique that we're doing. So you'll see me do it here, but then remove them in a moment. But I used just a little bit of adhesive and it was still wet when I removed them, so I was okay. Now to make sure that my image really popped, I'm tracing over the black lines with my black Copic markers. I don't always do this, but I do always do it to anything on the face, like the smile or the eyes or the nose, because I really wanna make sure that they're dark black so they really pop out. And I also added little feet to this monster so there was a little splash of green too. So I colored all three monsters with the same colors, and now it's time to do that masking that you see around it, that like blue cloud that you see. So I need to cut my mask. So I have the coordinating dies for each of the monsters and I'm cutting them from Inka Dinka Doo masking paper. If you don't have this masking paper, you could use a post-it note or some typing paper. So now I'm going to take the eyes off of my little monster. As I mentioned, I shouldn't have put those on earlier. And I'm going to take the negative space of our mask and position it perfectly around our monster. Then I'm going to take the mask itself and pop it right in place, then remove the negative place. And that way I know that the, the mask is positioned exactly on top of our stamped image. 
Now I'm coming in with some tumbled glass distress ink. This is a very light blue ink that I'm putting on very, very lightly with an ink blending tool. Notice I'm starting with my inking tool on the mask and pulling it out off of the mask. That gives that nice kind of halo look. I'm doing this very light handed because I don't want to leave any marks from the inking tool on my paper. So I'm doing this very lightly and not adding too much ink to my inking tool each time. And you'll see you end up with this great halo around the image and a little white trim too, which really makes the image pop. So here I'll do that again. I'm putting the negative space down around our little monster, making sure it's positioned perfect. Putting the mask right in place into the negative space. Then I'm taking that negative piece off and I have my mask perfectly positioned. I'm coming in again with that same color of Distress Ink, starting on the mask and pulling it out very light-handed. It's better to go light-handed and, and keep have to repeat the process, like putting more and more ink on, than putting too much on at first. You could use other inks and other ink blending tools for this. Pigment inks would look, work well also, but you want to make sure you don't have too much ink on your inking tool. I used the tumble glass on two of the cards, and I used Wild Honey for that third card on the left. Okay, now for the sentiments. I'm using this stamp set from Right at Home. This is a good one because it has lots of messages included in it, and you can mix and match things together. I also like that the font is kind of universal. It would work with pretty much any style of card. At the end of this video, I'll show you how I use the same sentiment stamp set to decorate the envelopes also. Now that we have our little stamp panels done, let's go ahead and create our note cards. So I created three top folding three and a half by five inch note cards from some colored cardstock. And I'm going to use this We Are Memory Keepers Next Level Dotted Embossing Folder. I've used these embossing folders many times and I cannot recommend them enough. They are special in that they create a very smooth raised image, not just raised areas and lowered areas. It just creates the most beautiful embossing. So I'm putting my card in just so that the front is in the embossing folder and the back of the card is hanging out. And I'm running this through my die cut machine as I would any embossing folder. With the Big Shot, that means I have all my tabs open. So check out those smooth dots that you get. I think this is beautiful, but also playful. So it works great for these kids' cards. If you like embossing folders and you haven't tried these next level, I really encourage you to do so. They're not too expensive and they come two in a pack. Okay, so now it's time to put these cards together. I really wanted that, that banner to stand up off the card with a little dimension. So what I did is I used the banner die to cut a piece from some white craft foam. So this craft foam has a little dimension to it. So when I glue this behind our stamped panel, it'll be raised. Now I just trimmed a little bit off the edge so you wouldn't see it from the side. So you just saw me trim a little bit around each side of this foam piece. Now I'm putting on some double-sided tape that's super strong. I really like the Be Creative tape. Adhering this to the back of the stamped panel. And now I'm going to put some more of that double-sided tape on the other side of the foam. Now I can stick this to the card. The reason I'm using this super strong tape is I wanna make sure that this adheres over all the dimension that is on that card from the embossing folder. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I did glue hit their eyes back on. And now I'm going over the little monsters with a bit of Wink of Stella shimmer pen. This just gives it a little bit of shine. It's hard to capture in the video, but I really think the kids would like this. Also, as I mentioned earlier, I stamped some sentiments that would match the card right onto the envelope flap just to pull it all together. And here I'll give you a look at the shimmer on the monster. I really think that's fun. Now to make sure this goes through the mail okay, I do include a small piece of packing foam that I put right on top of the image where it's raised, and I put it in the envelope like this. Now you will need to have some extra postage since this is so bulky, but I think it's definitely worth it. And I'll link to the packing foam that I use. So there you have a way you can use your coordinating dies to create really fast mass to create a nice halo around your stamped images. Now I link below to the videos and the products I talk about, but I encourage you to check out my blog. You can find it by clicking here on the top left. It'll have a lot more information, including a giveaway. Then I have three other videos shown here that might be helpful. The first one is another video showing how to use coordinating stamps and dies. The middle one shows some more Copic marker techniques. And the last one talks about why I use that craft foam on my cards. If you like this video and you want to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I appreciate you stopping by. Have a great day.